Folks, there's a term down here in Texas, all hat and no cattle. Um, translation is money talks and bullshit walks, or all talk and no action. Well, I came across this particular story, and it's uh, regarding uh, Mr. Trump and the various uh, promises that he made on the campaign trail. And one of those uh, promises is that he was going to uh, protect our various industries, and in particular, our steel industry. Well, um, Wilbur Ross is the Secretary of Commerce, and he basically was a former steel guy. So you would think that uh, Mr. Ross would have an affinity for the steel industry, and to be quite honest with you, he does. He went about putting together a report as far as the unfair uh, practices of foreign countries, including uh, China, Korea, that is South Korea, Vietnam, as far as the steel industry is concerned. Now that report has not been released yet, but I got a feeling I know uh, what's going down within the report. But anyway, Mr. Trump promised that he was going to protect specifically the steel industry. Well, guess what, folks? Our steel industry today is under greater attack than it was before Mr. Trump won the election and took office. I'm going to read you a story uh, regarding a small steel plant in Coshocton, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I think it's Coshocton, Pennsylvania, and the company is Arcalor Middle Steel Company, well, Arcalor Middle, which owns the uh, mill in Coshocton, and it has just announced that it's going to lay off 150 of the plant's 207 workers next year. Let me read you the story. At this sprawling steel mill on the outskirts of Pennsylvania, the workers have one number in mind. Not how many tons of steel roll off the line or how many hours they work, but where they fall on the plant seniority list. In September, Arcalor Middle, which owns the mill, announced that it would lay off 150 of the plant's 207 workers next year. While the cuts will start with the most junior employees, they will go so deep that even workers with decades of experience will be cast out. I told my son Christmas is going to be kind of scarce because mommy's going to lose her job soon, said Kimberly Allen, a steel worker and single parent who has worked at the plant for more than 22 years. On the seniority list, she's 72. <sighs> Just missed the damn cut. The layoffs have stunned these steel workers who, just a year ago, greeted President Trump's election as a new dawn for their industry. Mr. Trump pledged to build roads and bridges, strengthen Buy America provisions, protect factories from unfair imports, and revive industry, especially steel. Now, Mr. Trump did not tell the truth at, as we know it at this moment. Now, if they had done a $1 trillion infrastructure bill, this layoff more than likely would not have happened. But as you all know, no infrastructure bill has come through Congress, has even been a, put into any committee in either house. You should also be aware that 
Mr. Ross, to his credit now, wanted to immediately impose uh, tariffs against the Chinese who are dumping steel into this country, against the Koreans who are dumping steel into this country, against the Vietnamese who are dumping steel into this country. And there are several other countries that are producing cheap steel. And because of the thought of tariffs being instituted on steel coming from their countries, they have dumped record amounts of steel uh, into our country at this point in time. Mr. Trump in his own building projects, instead of using American steel, is using and has used foreign steel. Kind of funny uh, when he talks about make America great, but uh, he turns around and buys his steel from uh, foreign competitors. After a year in office, Mr. Trump has not enacted any policy that would benefit the steel industry. When it comes to steel, his failure to follow through on a promise has actually done more harm uh, than good. Back in 1992, there were approximately, let's call it 700,000 uh, steel workers. As of this date, that number is down to 386,000 steel workers. Now, that's not all his fault, because if I look at uh, 2008, when Barack Obama uh, came into office, the number of steel workers was somewhere around 450,000 uh, steel workers. That number dipped to uh, somewhere in the vicinity of uh, 375,000 steel workers. Um, and I believe that occurred somewhere around 2009, 2010. But if you recall, the country was going through a significant uh, downturn in its economy. That number has rebounded somewhat uh, to $386,000 as of today. But that number is getting ready to take another uh, severe drop because not only this plant, but U.S. Steel uh, has announced uh, major layoffs. Foreign steel workers, I'm sorry, foreign steel makers, as I indicated previously, have rushed to get their product into the United States before the potential tariff starts, which I indicated previously. According to American Iron and Steel Institute, which tracks shipments, steel imports were 19.4% higher in the first 10 months of 2017 than in the same period last year. That surge of imports has hurt American steel workers, which were already struggling against a glut of cheap Chinese steel. When Arcelor Middle announced the layoffs in Coshocton, it blamed those imports as well as low demand for steel for bridges and military equipment. Now, the bridge part I halfway kind of understand, but the military equipment? Didn't Donald Trump just uh, get pushed through Congress a massive defense bill that increased our defense spending by like I believe it was five, no, it was $50 billion, taking our overall defense spending up to $600 billion annually. Yet, the demand for steel for military equipment has dropped. Something doesn't quite seem right here. Anyway, James Rockus, a spokesman for the Commerce Department, said the administration was aware of the plight of American steel workers and will continue working to halt unfair trade practices that harm our economy and kill American jobs. Well, what I want to know is what have they done in the past 11 months in order to help our American steel workers? And it appears that answer is absolutely nothing. Now, in 2008, before the financial crisis struck, 
This particular plant ran around the clock. Now it coughs a life just five days a week for eight hours at a time. The machine shoveled 10 ton steel slabs into a furnace where they are heated to 2000 degrees, then funneled them through giant rollers and cooling jets of water like a massive fiery car wash. The plant's specialty is ultra strong military grade steel, something that Eric Smith, a former army paratrooper who has worked at the plant for over 30 years prides himself on. Mr. Smith ranks 16th on the plant seniority list and expects to survive the coming round of layoffs. He grew up just down the street. The weathered houses of his old neighborhood on that dim day were fringed with icicle lights, evergreen bowls, and flags paying homage to Santa and the Philadelphia Eagles. As a boy, he would long to work at the factory as he passed it. These days, he said, he gets a sinking feeling as he goes through the turnstile and enters the plant. You just got to keep on pushing forward. It's like that Christmas taunt is coming around. You don't want to splurge for your kids like you want to because the plant may be closing. While he didn't support Mr. Trump, Mr. Smith said he hoped that the president would follow through on his plans. It's still kind of early, he said. Well, I don't think it's, it's early. I think it's kind of late, like 1130 and uh, 12 o'clock is right around the corner. Reforming trade was one of the president's signature campaign promises, and his first months in office, Mr. Trump issued dozens of executive orders. One pulled the United States out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a 12-country trade pact. Others ordered investigations into imports or renegotiations of trade pacts. Uncertainty about how these measures will reshape trade rules is now weighing on many industries. Companies are waiting to invest or finding additional suppliers outside the United States. Executives in agriculture, automobiles, solar energy, and information technology are basically making these statements. Now, the solar energy, there is no way in the world that solar energy should be looking for supplies outside of the United States. And if the policies of the Obama administration uh, had continued, that would more than likely not be the case, since Obama was all in on green energy and utilizing uh, businesses uh, in the United States that uh, produce the materials necessary to generate the green energy. But anyway, back to the article. In April, the president ordered parallel investigations into imports of steel and aluminum under the Little Use Section 232 of a 1962 trade law, which permits sweeping restrictions to protect national security. Well, well that piece sounded good. Earlier this year, tariffs seemed imminent. Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, said in late May that he expected to conclude the steel investigations by the end of June. And in early June, Donald Trump told a crowd in Cincinnati, wait till you see what I'm going to do for steel and your steel companies, vowing that he would stop the dumping of products at super low prices by other countries. We'll be seeing that very soon. The steel folks are going to be very happy, he said. But as usual, the announcement never came. That appears to be what caused partly the, in, I'm sorry, that appears to be caused partly by internal divisions within the White House. Some officials like Mr. Ross, a former steel executive who was on Archill Middle's board until he was confirmed in February, wanted to push ahead with tariffs, but others, including economic and national security advisors, worried about repercussions, trade advisors say. The tariffs had plenty of opponents, automakers, food processors, and companies in other industries that use steel and aluminum in their products, complaining that tariffs would drive up costs and make them less competitive, ultimately sacrificing more American jobs than they would save. Steel exporters, like the European Union, threatened retaliation. 
Prominent economists highlighted the risk of a trade war. I think the White House is immobilized because they have such a large number of voices, said Senator Sherrod Brown, a Democrat from Ohio who describes himself as an ally of the president on trade. This administration doesn't seem to know what it thinks about trade. The administration will face a series of deadlines on the steel measure next year. The Commerce Department must present the results of this investigation to the president by January 15th. Now, why they have to wait, what, six months uh, to present this report to the president when it should have been presented to him back in June, I do not understand. Guess it's just another delaying tactic for uh, some policy that Trump is going to have to pull the trigger on. The president at that point will have 90 days to decide what to do. President Trump and his advisors say they have been focused on the tax legislation which Congress passed this week. The White House has said that it plans to turn to trade measures, including the steel investigation, once the bill is signed into law. Well, it's, well, he's, I guess he's signing it today, so I guess uh, steel people uh, can cross their fingers that uh, he doesn't fall asleep in his goddamn chair. Still, the delay has threatened to fracture the brittle alliance the president has formed with labor unions who like Trump's populist attitude towards trade. Steel imports have soared since 2000, I'm sorry, in 2017. Back in 2016, there were two point, let's call it 2.6 uh, metric tons, 2.6 million metric tons of steel being imported, I guess, on a monthly uh, basis. That number, as of October 2017, is uh, 3.2 uh, million metric tons. So the amount of imported steel, instead of going down under the Trump administration, has skyrocketed, basically. Senator Bob Casey Jr., a Democrat from Pennsylvania, said the administration's commitment to steel workers would probably be an issue in the 2018 midterms. They sat on this for a long time, he said, which is true. The United Steel Workers Union, that includes the workers in Coshocton, has historically aligned with Democrats, but many workers opposed trade agreements forged by President Bill Clinton and Barack Obama and viewed Hillary Clinton's stance on trade as insincere. In a shift in the political politics of trade, the union has defended the Trump administration's trade agenda against the criticisms of traditionally Republican business groups like the Com Chamber of Commerce. But Scott Paul, the president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing, a trade group that represents steel workers, said he had a profound sense of frustration that the president has been using steel workers as political props. Who knew? The president's own words and lack of action have actually put the industry in a worse position than if he had done nothing at all, uh, Mr. Pauls said. Kameen Thompson, a union president at the Coshocton plant, said many workers had voted for Mr. Trump because of his support for steel. You want to vote for what you believe is going to help you keep a job, Mr. Thompson said. Ms. Allen, whose father worked at the Coshocton plant before her, was not a Trump supporter. He told them what they wanted to hear so they would vote for him, and now they're seeing what president he is, she said. But other workers who supported the president are keeping the faith. Chuck Howard, who has worked at the plant for 22 years and ranks around 80 on the seniority list, meaning he is likely to be laid off, said he had voted Republican because he believed that Mr. Trump was for the people. He still He's, I'm sorry, he said he still believed that the tariffs would happen, though perhaps not soon enough to save him. He's just delaying it, Mr. Hauser said of the president, and I think the delay is hurting us more than he knows. Folks, this is just another example, as uh, Ms. Allen said, of Donald Trump feeding a bunch of bullshit to people and them swallowing it, and now 
uh, when it comes time to uh, I hope this is a lesson and unfortunately I know it's a lesson a painful lesson to those people in Pennsylvania in Ohio in Wisconsin where the majority of our steel is manufactured they're going to lose their jobs due to lies told by Donald Trump and his unwillingness to listen to the Secretary of Commerce who is a steel guy as far as what to do in order to protect American steel worker jobs. It's coming folks, it's coming. And sooner or later, all of you, these Trump voters are gonna wake up and realize that Donald Trump sold them a bill of goods and now as they're on unemployment lines, having to apply for food stamps. Oh, and by the way, they want to chop food stamps down. So it's going to be harder and harder for them to get food stamps and even decent amounts in order to feed themselves and their families. Uh, the lack of health care because Medicare is going to be uh, slashed. Um, the Affordable Care Act uh, period has been cut off now. It was uh, supposed to, enrollment was supposed to go through January 15th, but it being uh, December the 22nd, <coughs> excuse me, it'll be too late uh, for them to uh, apply and uh, receive benefits under health care. These people are going to be in for a world of hurt. And the only thing that I can hope and pray for is that the majority of them have uh, their houses uh, paid off, paid for, uh, so that uh, they don't risk uh, being put out on the street with uh, no place to go. But so much for a Donald Trump promise. Oh, and just in case you thought I was bullshitting you about uh, steel workers being laid off around the country, <coughs> excuse me, U.S. Steel, one of Northwest Indiana's largest employers, on Wednesday laid off around 25% of its salaried workforce, including at local steel mills. This is part of an ongoing adjustment to staff levels and operations due to challenging market conditions, including fluctuating oil prices, not fluctuating all that much, reduced rig counts, that may in fact be true, depressed steel prices, that absolutely is true, and unfairly traded imports, said U.S. Steel spokesperson Sarah Casella. U.S. Steel has lost $1.5 billion last year amid a global import crisis, did not disclose exactly how many workers were laid off at each location or overall. But they were managers, supervisors, and other white-collar workers not represented by the United Steelworkers Union. The layoff took place at U.S. Steel's headquarters at Pittsburgh and its plants like Gary Works and the Midwest plant in Portage, Wisconsin. I'm sorry, it's Portage, Indiana. U.S. Steel reported having 21,000 employees nationally in its most recent annual report to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and about 18,000 were represented by the United Steel Workers Union in the new contract the two sides reached late last year. So the steel maker likely laid off around 750 of the 3,000 salary employees who are not represented by the union. Gary Works is the company's largest mill, so many of those layoffs occurred in Northwest Indiana. Laid off workers will get benefits under the company's supplemental employment program, Casella said, but she could not comment on any details of the severance. Casilla said the layoffs were part of the Carnegie Way cost-cutting plan and that laid-off workers would not let go for any one reason. Many factors were carefully considered, including skills, knowledge, and technical proficiencies needed to meet business needs, she said. No union workers were affected, United Steel Workers District 7 Director Mike Millsap said. It's all 
non-bargaining unit, supervisors, engineers, lawyers, he said, this is just about them taking care of their cost issues. They're trying to reduce their costs. U.S. Steel, which has lost money in six of the last seven years, has now laid off around 1,500 workers so far this year. The steel maker just laid off about 800 workers last month in Alabama and Texas as, as a result of low oil prices and crippled demand for tubular steel used in drilling. The steel maker laid off an undisclosed number of non-represented workers at part of its Carnegie Way initiative after Mario Longhi was named chief executive officer in late 2013 and has been going from department to department to see where it can cut costs. So folks, again, our steel industry is under mega attack and the current administration is doing nothing about it. Now, don't get me wrong, part of this can be laid at the uh, feet of uh, former President Obama. He should have uh, jumped in there immediately when he saw what the hell was going on back in 2009, 2010, and he had tools in his uh, toolbox that could have stabilized the situation, but for whatever reason, he chose not to act in defense of American workers. But Donald Trump came in and made all of these promises to protect the American worker, but it's done jack shit in order to do so.